What's up, YouTube? I wanted to create this video to address the issues that some people seem to be having with the fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro and possibly provide some helpful tips and information that could improve your experience. But first, let me start off by saying that yesterday, November 16, Google has released an update that addresses this issue. So if you haven't already, go download the update because it definitely improved the speed of unlocking my Pixel 6 Pro. In this video, I want to touch on four key areas. The types of fingerprint sensors Google could have used, provide some tips on how to set up your fingerprints, explain the proper way to use this type of fingerprint sensor, and possibly discuss why Google went with this sensor and what they do to improve security. The three types of sensors that Google could have used are capacitive, ultrasonic, and optical. Capacitive scanners generate electrical currents to generate a 3D image of the ridges and valleys of your fingerprint. The drawback to capacitive fingerprint readers is that they can't be used as in-display fingerprint scanners because the technology is not compatible with IPS, LCD, or OLED displays. So Google could not use a capacitive scanner. The ultrasonic scanner transmits an ultrasonic pulse against your finger, similar to the way bats and dolphins use sonar. This pulse usually maps out a three-dimensional image of your fingerprint. However, ultrasonic scanners, because they use that ultrasonic pulse to generate a 3D image, they don't particularly work very effectively when you try to use a screen protector because the ultrasonic pulse can't travel through that thickness of both your phone screen glass and a screen protector. So Google couldn't really use the ultrasonic scanner in the Pixel 6 because they want us to be able to protect our screens. So that left only the optical fingerprint sen sensor, which is what they went with. Now, optical fingerprint sensors use a backlight. So when you put your finger on the sensor, you see that light light up in the background. That light shines on your fingerprint and then a camera takes a two-dimensional optical image of your fingerprint and analyzes the ridges and valleys. It is extremely compatible with IPS LCD and OLED displays and is usually not affected at all by screen protectors. The drawbacks to optical are they are a little slower because as we showed you have to wait for that light and then you have to wait for it to scan before it unlocks the phone. They're also a little less secure than ultrasonic and capacitive scanners. However, Google did address that and we'll discuss it. But first what I want to do is provide some helpful tips on setting up your fingerprints. This might make getting into your phone a little easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our settings and we're going to go to security and we're going to go to fingerprint unlock. Now I have to put in my passcode, excuse me. Okay. And I've already set up one finger. So I'm going to add a fingerprint. Now this is what I recommend you do. When you're setting up your fingerprint, I'm going to use my thumb here because I already used my index finger. Put your finger down and press firmly and then rotate the phone. Different angles. Use different angles. Turn your finger sideways. Hold the phone. Turn your finger sideways. Do it like you would be doing if you're picking up your phone and using your thumb to unlock the phone. Use different angles. Use the tip of your thumb. Use the ball of your thumb. 
the back in the middle of your thumb set up different angles because you're gonna pick your phone up in different angles voila now what I do is I add another fingerprint but I use my same thumb twice now I'm doubling the images stored in the phone <clears throat> for security purposes so I'm giving the phone more images to compare using the tip of my finger back of my finger ball of my finger setting up different angles just as I would if I was picking the phone up and using my finger and now I have two images so now I have four to my index to my thumb I could add a fifth but I'm not gonna do that right now so that's how I recommend that you set up your fingerprints and this probably will give you a lot better experience in unlocking your phone So now what I want to do is I want to discuss how to use this type of fingerprint sensor. As you saw when we were setting it up, there's a light that emits from behind the fingerprint sensor. So when you go to unlock your phone, try not to do like some people I've seen where they try to go out here to the end. They only put half a finger they, they don't use, you know, they're not getting on the sensor. This is a, an optical scanner, which means you have to be within the viewing range of that camera in order for your fingerprint to register. So you want to make sure you put your fingerprint on the actual sensor, which Google highlights right here with a little fingerprint thing. So you want to put your finger on there and hold it down. You see, it took a little second there because it's actually using a camera to scan the image now sometimes it might be quicker than others and since we did our thumb we're gonna put our thumb on it see it works so the proper way to do it is to put your finger down on the sensor and press down firmly and hold it there don't just tap because I've seen people do this it's not working it's not working there's a problem well it's an optical sensor it has to be able to take a picture of your finger so if you're not holding it in place it's not going to take the image so press and hold unlocks one second folks that's all it takes So why did Google use the optical sensor? Well, as stated earlier, the capacitive sensor would not work as an in-display fingerprint reader. It's not compatible with the OLED screen in our phone. Google did not use the ultrasonic scanner because it does not work well with screen protectors and Google wants us to be able to protect our screen. So Google was only left with an optical sensor, but given that the optical sensor can be less secure, Google had to do something to fix that. So what they did is they put out this tweet to help explain why the sensor is the way it is. So as Google tweeted here in this tweet, they added a layer of protection to the sensor using machine learning and artificial intelligent cores of the new Tensor SOC. So think about it this way, just as Google uses that ML and AI to do its magic with being able to put a 3D bokeh effect on, a, on an image, <laughs> 
it's also doing the same thing with the fingerprint camera. It's using that ML and AI to turn your 2D fingerprint image into a 3D image, making the fingerprint image and comparison much more secure. So given this information, I think we should all be happy that we have actually the best in display fingerprint type of sensor that can be used and the fact that Google has implemented a method to make accessing your phone much more secure using that ML and AI on the new Tensor SOC. So thank you all for watching. I hope this is helpful. And if you like the video, please click the like button and share with your friends. Have a great day.